Guys, how's it going? Welcome to my video. Um, here's the thing. Um, I just want to give you guys some tips. If you guys have the situation that I had a couple of days ago. So basically, um, what happened was uh, I was at um, I was at a McDonald's. I went to get something to eat. Parked my car, got out, was there for maybe like 15 minutes, got back in, and it would crank, my car would crank, and crank, and crank, but it would not turn over. It would not turn over, it would just crank and crank and crank and would not turn over. So, um, I haven't had that issue um, with this car um, at all. I mean, that was uh, maybe like seven months ago. I had an issue where it, it wouldn't start and it turned out to be the battery, but it, it didn't crank. It turned out to be a dead battery. <clears throat> but I uh, really never had an issue where uh, this car would crank and crank and crank, but it wouldn't turn over. So... The only issue I had was that dead battery from seven months ago. This car will fine since. I've had no issues with it. So, uh, basically, what I did first was I turned on the headlights. And uh, just to see where the battery was, what level, how much charge is in the battery. If it was dim, I, 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 I knew that it was the battery that was the issue. But the lights were bright. <clears throat> Headlights were bright. So basically, I, I I didn't think it was the battery to begin with. But, uh, and and the reason why it wasn't just because of the headlights. It was because of how strong the cranks were. All right. It wasn't like a, it was a slow crank. It wasn't like it was a soft crank. It wasn't like it was trying to crank. Um, you know, it was a very, very strong crank each and every time it cranked. <clears throat> Regardless, I opened up the hood and pretty much checked um, checked around the battery, cause uh, cause because for that for uh, because I thought I was hoping that it was be it would be something as simple as that. I didn't really want it to be anything bigger than that. Obviously, uh, most people are in this situation, uh, if they were in this situation. <clears throat> You know, they, they'd wish for the easiest fix. So I was looking at the battery. I was looking at the terminals. And uh, um, you know what? I don't think I actually cleaned up the terminals last time when I changed up the battery seven months ago. I was looking at the terminals. They looked um, kind of corroded. Uh, there was some rust on it, kind of corroded. There was some white, bluish stuff on there. So um, I pretty much... Uh, you know, had a couple of fries and then I took out my Coke, which I drank half a bottle, half a uh, cup of, and I poured the rest uh, onto the terminals and, and um, had it fizz up, oxidized, you know, a, a lot of the, a lot of the corrosion. So I pretty much took some paper towel and, and wiped it. But here's the thing. I, I was actually able to wiggle um, both the terminals off. They were they were tight, but not so tight that I couldn't move it. But I was able to move it, wiggle it, and uh, once I took it off, um, pretty much wiped it and popped it back on. And I was hoping that was going to be the fix for it. Um, but unfortunately when I got back and tried to start it, it would crank and it wouldn't start. Now I didn't give up, uh, thinking that it might've been a battery for whatever reason, but however, I did have a, a booster pack and for whatever reason, I decided to put the booster pack on the terminals and then try to start it. Um, did the same thing. So at that point, I 100% knew 
that it probably wasn't a power issue, probably wasn't a battery issue. Um, so I, at that point, I ruled out the battery. I ruled out um, the, the dirt, the terminals being, uh, uh, you know, corroded. Ruled that out. Uh, I actually did check the negative line. Um, if you guys don't know what the negative line is, the negative line is the the ground line, the ground wire. All right. Normally, the negative terminal uh, wire that goes to the negative your battery actually connects to the frame of the car. I actually did um, check to make sure that it was connected. Uh, sometimes, for whatever re reason. Um, the, the the cables might be frayed and, and, and break off. They break off sometimes, but I, I, I made sure that it was connected to the frame. It was good. Sometimes a, a, a crank no. A, a, sometimes a crank no start situation would could be caused by that. But normally uh, something like that would would also cause a very very slow, weak crank, which is not the situation I had. But obviously in that situation I was able to eliminate uh, the ground wire also eliminate the alternator being the issue and uh, I I, re I really didn't consider the alternator being the issue to begin with but just to be 100 percent sure you know putting the booster pack on I was able to eliminate the alternator being that uh, if the alternator was for whatever reason um, dying or weak or, or charged up the battery to just a, a little amount um, <clears throat> Uh, me putting a booster pack on and, you know, it would start the car if it was the alternator that was the issue. However, I didn't think, you know, that that's not one of the things that came up as far as me trying to figure out um, how to, you know, a way to solve the issue with this car. Not uh, cranking, but not starting. But, okay, here's the thing about it. So I can eliminate all those things. Now, um, other things that could be causing it, uh, mass airflow sensor... The crankshaft, the camshaft, uh, position sensor, throttle position sensor. Um, I pretty much was able uh, to rule out all those things. Seeing as how um, I actually remembered that there was no check engine light on uh, my dash. I haven't had a check engine light for a long while. I did have a mass airflow sensor issue maybe like six months ago. That caused the check engine light to come on, but no starting issues, no driving issues, uh, as far as you know, I could tell. But, but that's that was a very important thing as far as eliminating um, what could be causing uh, the issue with the car. So basically, um, I was able to eliminate all those things: the the mass airflow sensor, the um, the throttle position sensor, camshaft, crankshaft, and anything else that has a sensor connected to it. But um, I recalled that I had a similar situation with another car where uh, there was a, maybe a computer issue. I think it was a computer issue with the computer did not was not able to connect to the car itself because of blow, because of a blown fuse on the car's computer, uh, blown ECU fuse or something like that. And um, now I, I was. Uh, I didn't think that was the issue, but I had an OBD2 reader, a $20 OBD2 reader that I actually bought from um, Amazon, um, from from Walmart. And uh, I plugged it in. And it, here's the thing about it. It read all the way through. It analyzed it, gave me a readout. At that point, I knew that it wasn't the OBD2 that was no, I, I knew that it wasn't the cost computer uh, issue at that point. Reason being is that if it if it was an issue of a communication issue from the car's computer to the car, um, if that happened, the issue what would have occurred was it would not have uh, it would not have been able to analyze it. It would it would have stopped midway, but it went all the way through. There was no codes at all. I did not see a single code pop up at all. So I was glad that that was the case because I could, at that point, eliminate every single thing that had a um, that had a sensor connected to it. All right. So I could rule that out. Um, 
So after that, I was thinking, well, here's the thing. It could be fuses, relays. It could be fuel pump. It could be um, T-fob, ignition switch. Um, any of those things. But the most, the more simplest of those things to tackle was the fuses, um, the relays, the ch- and 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 the uh, fuel pump. So what I did was I, I went to the fuse box, checked out all the fuses, see if I could see any burnt fuse. Uh, see, you know, I, I tried uh, trying to detect whether there was a, a hint of any kind of burnt smell. Um, was not able to see anything out of the ordinary as far as uh, any kind of burnt fuses, blown fuses, etc., etc. So at that point. I I couldn't confirm 100% it wasn't the fuses, but I would say probably, uh, you know, probably a good guess that it was not one of the fuses that was causing uh, this issue. But it, it could have been possibly been uh, one of them. But anyway, uh, moving on, I thought um, at that point I had considered before that I had considered that it could have been the fuel pump. Um, and um, I actually did the uh, the test on my own as far as trying to figure out whether the fuel pump was operating or not. Um, normally, it would be a best scenario if there was at least two people uh, for this test. One would be outside, uh, right next to, uh, you know, where you pump the gas. The fuel with the fuel, with the uh, gas cap off, uh, somebody would be listening to see to hear some kind of motor running uh, or, or whizzing sound and then the person in the car would try to put the car on the on position. The on position is the position, the ignition position right before the crank. This would be the last position before it cranks up. The reason why you don't want to crank up is because the cranking noise, the the, 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 the crank will actually drown out the noise from the uh, the motor, all right. So you're trying to listen to for like a slight whizzing motorized sound. On so I tried it. I was sitting in the car. I tried a couple of times to put it in the on position, and unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to detect whether it, there was any kind of um, any kind of sound, any kind of motorized whizzing sound. So at that point, um, I pretty much just gave up on that. So basically what I did next was the fuse, checking out the fuses, but um, and uh, was not able to decipher whether it was a fuse issue. So what I did after that was try to figure out whether it was, uh, you know, one of the relays. Um, so... What I did was I I, I, con- I had considered that it pr- was maybe the relay to the fuel pump. It could have been a fuel filter, a clock fuel filter, but normally a clock fuel filter. Um, it, it, it would cause a, a, a crank no start sometimes, but for the most part, uh, it, it would, you know, it would crank up and then, uh, you know, it, it, it'll stall out. It wasn't It wasn't the case here. So I didn't think it was the fuel filter considering it would crank and crank and crank and crank. It, it seemed like there was no something that was not cause was that was causing it not to turn over. So um, I got to the, uh, the, the fuel pump relay. Once I got to the fuel pump relay, figured out where it was. Um, you know, I couldn't detect whether there was a malfunction in with the relay. So what I did was I took out another relay, took out another relay uh, that was, you know, the same, the same, had the same markings as far as, you know, the numbers on there and stuff like that. And uh, I kind of swapped it out. And then I got back in my car and guess what, guys? cranked and then it turned over it was working just fine so at that point i knew it was the fuel pump relay that was the issue and uh 
obviously since it was the issue I was able to drive drive the car to an auto zone and got uh, got a replacement relay uh, pretty much swapped it out um, you know swapped swapped it out and then replaced it the one that I took it out from the accessory that I took it out from so I haven't had an issue since with um, with any kind of cranking situation. Haven't had a single issue since. But to be honest, I have I I, I didn't actually drive that much, but um but uh, haven't had uh, an issue since with the issue with the the the, the crank no start issue. So it's been resolved. Uh, it drove fine all day today. Not a you know no, didn't have the same issue as I had previously. So I'm um, I'm um, um, I this is a you know it was an easy fix. I'm glad it was an easy fix. If you guys are in this situation, you guys are looking for you know to troubleshoot your crank but no star situation. Um, you know if you guys go down the list of what I went through as far as eliminating each and every one of those things, um, ninety uh, percent of your situation. Could probably be, uh, you could probably figure out what the problem is. Uh, regardless, uh, hope you know whatever your situation is at this point that it's it's an easy fix for you. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you have any comments at all, please leave a comment in the comment section. All right, guys, take care.